Let me share with you a couple highlights of these last few days that I was on a little break in Italy. Last Tuesday night was the night before the great feast of the Holy Cross of Jesus, the vigil. And last Tuesday night in the ancient town in Tuscany, where I was staying, they had the largest Catholic candlelight vigil procession through the streets. It's the largest one in all of Italy. About 4,000 people, young and old, beautiful, with candles all through the town. And they turned off all the electric lights, only candles lit the buildings, the streets. And they had, you know, the red band? They had about 10 of those. And just fabulous, just very moving and very beautiful on the night before the Feast of the Holy Cross last Tuesday. Another highlight was the other day I was hiking with some family and friends between little fishing villages overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, we hiked from one to the other, a little, a little path for sheep or for goats, very narrow, the cliff, the ocean below, and, uh, and the rocks and the old path, tough to walk and, and rocky and hard on the feet. I couldn't believe it because the day before I looked on the map, it looked so flat and smooth on the map. It was a map, flat and smooth. You know, I'm going to go, I mean, you know. So anyway, the gospel for you and I this September weekend, Jesus gives this parable, this image, this story about the business manager who was clever, a little dishonest, but clever. And what's it all about? Well, I read in a New York paper a few years ago, this guy named Mike Whitner. He recently paid off a $25 parking ticket he got in New York City. Now, he got the parking ticket when he and his wife were on their honeymoon in New York 20 years ago. But this guy said it was always on his mind, like he couldn't sleep at night. So, how honest. He finally sent in, he paid the city the parking ticket. That seems like the opposite of the guy in the gospel, right? The business manager who was going to get fired, so he called in the people who owed his boss money. He kind of finagled with them, told them, you know, change, change the bills, right? And you would think of our Lord, why is our Lord commending this guy? The gospel, St. Luke says, Jesus said, you know, he commended him, he complimented him. Why? Because of his cleverness, his initiative. He stepped forward. He did something to make the situation better, well, for him. But the guy showed initiative. He had smarts. He was clever in doing something. And our Lord in the gospel says, Jesus is saying more or less, I wish the children of light, people of faith like you and I, I wish they were that clever. They had that much initiative in sharing and deepening faith as, <laughs> as the, the business manager. That's the whole message of the story, really. And we don't know if that man was good or bad. The gospel doesn't tell us. St. Mark Twain, the writer, once said, there's a little bit of bad in the best of us. There's a little bit of good in the worst of us. Mark Twain said that. That man might have not, not been an awfully bad man, but he took initiative. Now, what does it mean to take initiative? Well, it means to not just talk about it, but to step forward and do something about the situation. Now, the other day in Italy, I was talking to a guide, wonderful woman who brings tourists all over, and we were talking. She said, you know, 90% of the people in Italy are baptized Catholics, 90%. She said 12% go to church on the weekend, 12%. And she said many of the beautiful churches no longer have mass. They are halls for concert music. They are libraries. They are art galleries. But many of the beautiful churches no longer have mass because there aren't that many people that are practicing the faith. And she was saying, I wish somebody had the initiative, some clever ways to encourage, to strengthen, to invite deeper faith in those people. Well, guess what? 
we're in the same boat, kind of, you know. 32% of Catholics practice their faith on weekends in this country. 32% only go to church on weekends. And if we say the church is a boat, like St. Peter's fishing boat, there's a leak in the boat. And, and the leak is that so many of our relatives, friends, neighbors, you know, they're, well, they're not, they're not walking the walk. They might say, I'm this or that, but, well, they're not here. And I don't know, in other ways, they practice our beautiful faith. So what is the initiative to think of ways that we can make the situation better as we head into fall, autumn, and then the wonderful holy seasons of our Catholic faith? I know a couple that their marriage was kind of drifting on the rocks, and they took initiative. They were clever. They said, you know, once a week, get away from the kids. We're going to go out. We're either going to go to dinner, have a pizza, whatever, and we're just going to have quality time. And they kind of saved their marriage. It got better. They took the initiative. They used their mind. They were clever. I know of, of a mom, a young mother with little kids. Whenever she was in the kitchen, the kids are grabbing onto her apron and her, you know, she couldn't even move at the stove. And the mother took initiative. She got, got a little floppy love seat couch. She stuck it in the corner of the kitchen. She said, you kids sit there while I do my work. You can talk all you want, but that's your place. Stay right there. It worked. I know of a businessman who would go into his office earlier than anybody else. And he just wanted to start the day early. Then he found out that the extra time he had later in the day, he could help a couple people in the office that were, well, a little shaky. They weren't too sure if their work, maybe it was their computer, I don't know what, but he used his extra time to help them. It made the whole office scene better and happier. He took initiative. He was clever. I know of a student in a school, a bright kid, who was doing so well, he practically didn't have to study or do anything. This kid was a genius, but there were a couple kids that, well, didn't, they needed a little help, right? So this kid took the initiative. He tutored, he spent time with them. He helped those students out, and their marks, their grades came up. So what can we do, you and I, with our faith as we head into fall and the wonderful seasons of the Catholic Church coming up? What initiative? What can we do? What can we say? Well, we're going to try and think of ways as a parish to do that more and more. Our people who are from 18 years old to 35, there's beautiful exceptions, but our people from 18 to 35, 5% practice our faith. They're the future of the church. <laughs> we don't want these places to be libraries, concert halls, or art galleries, you know? So as we head into fall, one of the things I thought about as well, I was hiking over the cliffs, <laughs> the goat path in Italy, was ways that you and I can help. Initiative, clever, to enforce, reinforce, invite, encourage faith. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.